In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the average kinetic energy of a gas and also the root mean square velocity as well. So let's focus on this question. What is the average kinetic energy of a sample of neon gas at 25 degrees Celsius? Now, there's a, an equation that you need to know. The average kinetic energy is equal to 3 over 2 times RT. Now, R is not the gas constant 0 0.08206. It's not that one. The R that you need to use is 8.3145 joules per mole per Kelvin. Kinetic energy has a unit of joules in it. So you got to use the energy constant as opposed to the gas constant. The temperature we need it to be in Kelvin, not in Celsius, as you can see based on the unit here. So we got to add 273 to 25, which is 298 Kelvin. So therefore, the average kinetic energy is going to have the units joules per mole. So now let's multiply 3 times 8.3145 times 298 divided by 2. So you should get 3,716.6 joules per mole. So this is the average kinetic energy of this gas at 25 degrees Celsius. Now notice that the average kinetic energy was not dependent on the identity of the gas. It didn't really matter if this was neon or helium or argon. The only thing that mattered was the temperature. The average kinetic energy is directly dependent on temperature alone. So as the temperature increases, the average kinetic energy will increase proportionally. So if you double the temperature, the average kinetic energy will double. If you triple the temperature, the average kinetic energy of a gas will triple. Number two, what is the root mean square velocity of a sample of helium gas at 400 Kelvin. If you want to pause the video and attempt this problem yourself, go ahead. Now there's an equation that we can use. The root mean square velocity is equal to the square root of 3 RT divided by the molar mass of the substance. Now there are some things that you need to know. R, just like the last problem, is not 0 0.08206. It's 8.3145 joules per mole per Kelvin. The temperature once again has to be in Kelvin. Now M is something that you have to be very careful with. M represents the molar mass but not in grams per mole but in kilograms per mole. So watch out for that. So now let's go ahead and finish this problem. So it's going to be the square root of 3 times R which is 8.3145 and units joules per mole per Kelvin. The temperature is going to be 400 Kelvin. Now the molar mass depends on the identity of the substance. Helium, based on a periodic table, has a molar mass of 4 grams per mole, which I should write it like this. Now we need to change it. We need to convert grams to kilograms. One kilogram is equivalent to a thousand grams. And so four divided by a thousand is 0 .004 kilograms per mole. So this is what we got to plug in for M. Now let's go ahead and get the answer. So let's type this in and see what it comes out to be. So you should get 1,579 meters per second. The unit for speed or velocity is going to be meters per second. That's the standard unit. Now for those of you who may want to see how to get that unit from what we have here, Notice that the unit Kelvin cancels, 
and moles cancel. So what we have is the square root of joules per kilogram. Now you need to have a good knowledge of physics if you want to understand how to get meters per second from it. Now for those of you who may want to know, I'm just going to take a minute to answer that question. Now work is equal to force times distance. And based on Newton's second law, force is mass times acceleration. So work equals mad. Now work is the transfer of energy, and it has the unit joules. Mass in physics is in units of kilograms. Acceleration is meters per second squared. And distance, or displacement, is going to have the unit meters. So if you divide by kilograms, you're going to have joules per kilogram on the left side. On the right side, you can have meters times meters, which is square meters on top, and you have square seconds on the bottom. Now, what you need to do is take the square root of both sides. The square root of meters squared is just meters, and the square root of seconds squared is just seconds. So as you can see, the square root of joules per kilogram is equivalent to meters per second. So anytime you need to calculate the root mean square velocity, if you use these values, this particular R value, and if the molar mass is in kilograms per mole, your final answer should have the units meters per second. Now let's move on to number three. If the temperature of a gas increases by a factor of two, what effect will it have on a root mean square velocity? So what happens when you increase the temperature? What happens to the average speed of the gas molecules? Well, if you increase the temperature, the average kinetic energy goes up, which means that the molecules, they're going to be in motion, but to a greater extent. They're going to be moving faster. So the root mean square velocity will increase. So therefore, we could eliminate answer choice D and E. It has to be either A, B, or C. Now, to calculate the exact amount, here's what you need to do. We need to use this equation. Now, everything that doesn't change, we're going to replace it with a 1. And the stuff that changes, we're going to replace it with a number that corresponds to that change. So the 3 is not going to change, so I'm going to replace it with a 1. R is going to be the same. The temperature doubles and increases by a factor of 2, so I'm going to replace T with 2. And the molar mass doesn't change, so I'm going to replace it with a 1. So this is going to be the square root of 2. So if you double the temperature, the root mean square velocity will increase by a factor of two, uh, square root 2. If you triple the temperature, the root mean square velocity will increase by a factor of the square root of 3. If you quadruple the temperature, the square root of 4 is 2, so the root mean square velocity will double in that case. If you increase the temperature by 9, the root mean square velocity will triple. If you increase the temperature by 16, the root mean square velocity will increase by 4. You just got to take the square root of the temperature change, and that's going to give you the answer. So in this problem, C is the right answer. Now what about this one? Which of the following gases has the highest average kinetic energy at 500 Kelvin? Is it nitrogen gas, oxygen gas, carbon dioxide? Which one is it going to be? Now keep in mind the average kinetic energy based on this formula is equal to 3 over 2 times RT. So it depends only on temperature. Now notice that every gas has the same temperature, 500 Kelvin. So therefore they all have the same average kinetic energy. The average kinetic energy does not depend on the identity of the substance. It simply depends on the temperature. So the only way they could be different is if the temperature is different. So let me give you another example. Let's say if you have three gases, helium, oxygen, and xenon. Now helium is at 300 Kelvin, oxygen is at 400 Kelvin, and xenon is at 500 Kelvin. Now in this case, the average kinetic energy will not be the same. Because xenon is at the highest temperature, the average kinetic energy will be the greatest for xenon. So it's going to be the highest. And the average kinetic energy will be the lowest for helium because it's at 
the lowest temperature. So average kinetic energy of a gas only depends on the temperature. And that's what you need to take from this question. Number five. Which of the following gases will have the greatest root mean square velocity at STP? So if they're all at STP, we don't have to worry about the temperature or the pressure because it's the same for every gas. So we need to look at something else. First, let's focus on the equation. The root mean square velocity is dependent on two things, the temperature and the molar mass. As the temperature increases, the root mean square velocity will increase. But the temperature is the same for every gas, so we don't have to worry about that. As the molar mass increases, the root mean square velocity will decrease since m is on the bottom. Anytime you increase the denominator of a fraction, the value of the entire fraction decreases. And it makes sense. Heavy molecules will move slower. The lighter molecules will move faster. Just think of if you're on a highway, for example. Let's say if you see a small sports car. It's easy for the sports car to move fast. But if you see a big heavy truck, it usually doesn't move that fast. It tends to move slower than a lighter car. So it's very easy for a light molecule to move fast. And it's very difficult for a heavy molecule to move fast. Heavy molecules tend to move slow. And so we have this inverse relationship between the molar mass of a gas and the root mean square velocity. So we're looking for the gas that has the greatest root mean square velocity. So therefore, we need to find or identify the gas that has the lowest molar mass. So which of these gas molecules is the lightest? So we got to find the molar mass of every gas. Neon, based on the periodic table, it's about 20. Cl2 is 35.45 times 2, so it's about 70.9 as a molecule. Helium is 4. O2 is 16 times 2, so that's 32. And hydrogen is about 2. And I forgot the letter E. So the answer is hydrogen gas. It's going to have the greatest root mean square velocity at SDP.